It's time for the long-awaited sequel to my highly critically acclaimed video on polyvagal theory, tilt, and competitive esports. It is why it feels bad to get good. So we're going to talk about the cycle, the training cycle, and uh, then we're going to talk about why that sucks. And then we're going to close with my, my thoughts, what you should actually take away from this. So let's talk about the training cycle. Step one, you suck. Everybody sucks when they start out doing anything that applies to any competitive esport, be it Counter-Strike, Rocket League, Apex Legends, even lifting weights in the gym. Nobody's born strong. Nobody's born good at any of these games. They all suck to start with. So we're here to get better. So step two, you learn. And learning sucks because you either learn the hard way by losing, or you learn the easy way by, by doing your research, looking at inspiration, and you find out the things that you're doing wrong or that you're not doing that you should be doing. And it always sucks to look at your own mistakes and failures. Step three, we try to do the new things well. Nobody gets things right the first time when they're trying new things. So you're going to lose rounds. You're going to miss shots when you should hit them. You're going to lose games. It's going to suck. Step four, you try to inc well, you can do these things that you've been trying. So you're competent at them, but consciously, they're not unconscious. They don't fit nicely with your muscle memory, with your unconscious neuromuscular uh, athletic ability. And so you're going to apply these new things that you learn how to do at the wrong times. You're going to make the wrong decisions mentally. Um, and again, you're going to lose and that's going to suck. But let me point out really quick that we're talking about muscle, uh, muscle memory and trying to merge new conscious competence with unconscious competence. Um, we are consciously overriding our muscle memory. And if you remember the last video, that sounds like tilt in which overthinking in a high pressure situation leads to manual control of what's normally an unconscious activity. So, um, yeah, if you if you make pro players focus on their movements, they get worse because it's so ingrained that taking that away, it's it's less efficient, right? So we talked about that in the last video. Um, so in step four, you can tilt yourself, and that sucks. Um, and then step five, uh, after we do all this, you know what happens? We get tired, and the more tired we get, the worse we get. And if we get too tired, the bottom falls out, and we can't do anything at all anymore. And let's not forget that we 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 are playing this game for fun, uh, and we set out to get better. So far, we've only gotten worse. Well, after we do all that, we have to rest. And in resting, you can't play. You have to eat right. You have to sleep right. You have to let your body recover and adapt to the stress. And we call this entire cycle training. It's true of the gym, and it's true of Counter-Strike. This whole cycle sucks for two reasons. The first reason is that in competitive esports, it's very difficult to feel like you've made progress because you can't go back and play the people that you lost to six months ago. It's like if you went every time you went to the gym, uh, you were only allowed to lift your one rep max. The gym picked it for you and you weren't allowed to see what it is. That would be very difficult and you wouldn't ever feel like you were getting stronger. And that doesn't even include like running into Smurfs or just having a bad day. Uh, you're, it's going to be incredibly frustrating. And I think that would feel as frustrating as competitive esports sometimes feel to us. Let's talk about the second reason this cycle sucks. It's that these cycles take longer and longer the stronger you get. So in the novice period of anything, you can make improvements very quickly. If you're comfortable with video games, if you pick up a new game, you can probably do this entire cycle in minutes. You know, you play a tough game, you take a walk, you get a drink of water, you come back, you've already rested enough, you've already incorporated that new learning enough to be better already, uh, right? That's like in the middle of the novice period. However, once you start getting to the intermediate and advanced levels, um, you know, when you're working out in the gym, just to give you an example, uh, you have to start using something like the Texas method in which you have to combine like you don't get stronger over the course of one workout. You get stronger over the course of an entire week. All three of your workouts in the week are what's necessary to stress you out enough to get you stronger. You have to do like a five by five day and then 
your actual work set day and then like a low or a high volume, low weight day. You have to alternate these things just to stretch yourself enough to get a little bit better. I'm getting a little bit distracted. These cycles take longer and longer and the stress gets tougher and tougher. So you have to put yourself in more and more uncomfortable situations. You have to put yourself against better and better opponents uh, to stress yourself out enough to actually learn. Well, that sucks. That sucks. So we have a whole training, every stage of training, you know, which again, we're, we undertook because we're trying to get better. And also we're here playing games because we want to have fun. And so we're losing and we're not getting better. So why should we do this? Why shouldn't we just stay where it's comfortable? Why shouldn't we just play these games like we've always played them, um, where it's familiar, where it's kind of safe? And here's where we get to the takeaway. So look, frankly, I, I don't think any of you guys that I know, um, any, of you, any of you folks that I know are gonna stay where it's comfortable. It's like if a human never learned to walk, they just crawled around their whole lives because it was easier that's not what we do. We take on hard things because I think every human feels this kind of calling. There's a great satisfaction in getting better. But this process is so difficult. What I just hope you take away is understanding when we miss shots and we lose rounds and we lose games, trying to improve, stressing ourselves out, um, challenging ourselves, that we see those mistakes uh, for what they are, which is a critical and crucial part of the improvement process that in fact they don't signify us getting worse or us being bad but they signify us getting better and so when it happens we can take a step back take a deep breath and understand this is we're right on track we're right on track even when we lose we're right on track doing new things um, because this can be very frustrating and it's not it's not obvious and it's not a given and it's not natural to, to go through this process in competitive esports and feel good about it. I mean, do you know anyone that goes about this that way? Um, it's really hard to do. So I hope we can have that awareness, have that big picture view, and that we can keep doing this. Uh, and I think it's worth saying that uh, all of you that I know uh, that have been playing competitive esports, be it Counter-Strike, Rocket League, Apex Legends, you've all gotten so, so much better. I don't know if you can feel how much better you've gotten, but you're already way on track and doing great. And I'm very proud of you all, truly. So that's why it feels bad to get good. And uh, I hope that helps. And so, uh, well, that's all I've got. So take care and I will see you around. Bye-bye.